Ferdy. Hi. Do you have a video there? Yeah, um, I just turned back on again. It should appear in a second. Okay. Uh, very good. So, um, that was uh, Count Johan. He's from from Dresden and and he's uh, gonna do up a design of a micro house that we are gonna build next oh, nice. here so that's for some of the summer housing um, so that's pretty cool mm -hmm. okay. so he's an architect so he um, yeah yeah no, that's pretty cool so let's jump in here so what are, what are your thoughts uh, how, how you've been doing lately what, what are you up to these days I know that my, my last um, spot was in, Porto, in Portugal, yeah. in a small little... Ah, yeah, actually, you, you know Tiago and um, Oficinas do Convento. Do you remember when we went to see the brick factory? Yeah. Yeah. So my idea was to, to um, stay there. I had a job um, teaching digital fabrication in the local schools. Oh, yeah. And I was um, also helping in finding a, a makerspace in Evora. Oh, wow. But... Um, yeah, but in the end, I, I decided to move back to Munich, and right now I applied for two quite nice engineering jobs here in Munich. I need some money, like uh, I'm, I'm a bit broke after <laughs> so much time in Portugal. And so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like get a job, earn some money, and then continue on working on my own projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a digital fabrication teaching in, in Portugal, that was a, what, at a like, high school or something? or? Yeah, it's like secondary school, like 10th grade, and we had um, 8 classes and uh, 260 students. It was really nice to, to see that actually this is entering into the normal schools. Oh, that's good, that's good. Um, now, what kind of equipment did they have there? Oh, we, um, we started with laser cutting and then um, 3D printing. Um, uh, we bought kits like a micro bit, like making small robots. Um, uh, the milling machine, the, the, the usual uh, mini fab academy, so to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. But building most of the machines ourselves, so they, we have this big 3D printer that we designed like six years ago. Um, another one of those open source projects of mine that are not actually public yet. <laughs> but um, What, the 3D ah, printer? Yeah, I can see you. Sorry? You mean the 3D printer? Yeah. Hmm. It's well. It was kind of was meant as a joke for for a maker fair, but it turned out to be a very nice printer, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, a, a cubic meter big. Yeah, yeah, interesting. So, um, yeah, about the steam camps. Um, so, if you, wh when when are you ha hoping to land a job for the, with, as an engineer? Like the, the, the jobs I applied for. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm not very proud. Um, it's nothing uh, where, I'm, where I say like this is what I want to do in my life. One is a company that makes a flying car. They're, like, they're called Lilium. They're based here in Munich. Mm. They have a working prototype for a five people electric flying taxi, mm. which is kind of crazy. But um, I guess if I manage to get a job there, then this will be the last time I have to like write a curriculum and like I have the feeling that the salary I get paid now will be the the highest salary I will ever get. So I'm trying to get something nicely paid, do my job for three years, and then probably move to Bilbao and start building my big milling machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you you already have that job and you're starting? No, no, it's like a very lengthy process. And I applied for another one. They they make a little robot arm, which is also nice. And another one at the Deutsches Museum, which is the, the science museum in Munich. So yeah, let's see. But I have several options. If this doesn't work out, then in the worst case, I go to a fab lab in Germany, which is one of the nicest labs I know, in Camp Lindford. And they they, um, they just opened a facility. Um, it's like the old the ex coal industry in Germany. So they have a lot of space and agriculture. And they they um, got funding for a project um, where they help middle class or like 
um, smaller companies to be innovative. So our proposal is to identify ways of getting more innovation into like um, smaller companies in the in northern Germany related to agriculture. So yeah, kind of interesting. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. So have you? Uh, yeah. Did you take a look at the curriculum? Yeah. Uh, for what we're trying to offer. So we're trying to do that as soon as we get all the curriculum together. And we're trying to get people to, uh, to develop some of the missing pieces and then roll it out in the form of the STEAM camps. Um, let's see, but right now, um, it looks like probably January of 2020 would be the earliest we can yeah. run the STEAM camps. Uh, it seems like okay. you might, you probably might have a job by then. Does it sound like yeah. that? Or? But um, I, I will try to just... Um, Maybe I can do the, the, the first run just uh, as a as, as a single participant until I get all my stuff built and then until I'm like until I know how how everything works and help you in maybe improve uh, something where or documentation. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm happy to do almost anything. I guess I'm the most useful in engineering stuff, but I'm, I I can also do um, manuals or whatever is necessary. Mm -hmm. And I guess once I, I went through the whole cycle, and um, we can think about doing the next cycle um, as a class with more students. If this would be fun for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, are you going to have the time to do that if you know if you've got the job or? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's my hobby. Um, yeah, yeah. Because, because I mean. Um, yeah, with the program, it's, if it's nine days, I mean, that means like we could possibly do uh, people. Some people were talking about that as if it's a nine day program, it could be split out into like a month or two months or six weeks weekends, you know, yeah. that's a potential way to do it, too. But ideally, we would run it as a package. So it's like, OK, we do it and it's a uh, get it out of the way. Um, but it's true. Like in, if, if the first time available is January, like who has people would have to be on vacation in January to be able to do that, which in North um, North Hemisphere, like there's some countries that have uh, January vacations, but not typically in Europe or America, it some, sounds like. Um, so let's take a look at, okay, let's take a look at the um, nine day curriculum. Let's, let's get specific as to what we can have you collaborate on here. Let me paste this. Yeah, sounds awesome. Like I love all the projects. Um, um, I I saw that the, the open source um, power drill was not so hyped by everybody, but I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> I love to have an open source power drill. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, the yeah. Can you see my screen? Let, let me just. Um, not yet, no. Um, but I guess I can just open the. The Mandic curriculum yeah. link. Open that. Yeah. yeah. So maybe if you go into click. Yeah, so let's go through it. Like if you click edit there on the document itself, it goes. To, if you go into the document, it shows you the kind of like a more clear representation of what's in there. Like page four or page three mm -hmm. shows the day one summary. That's what we build. We start by building a little 3D printer. Now, on the 3D printer, there we don't have. We've been using the Titan Arrow, the pretty expensive extruder. I guess when you were there okay. with us, yeah, we were doing the Titan Arrow, and we were still some having some issues with it. But for this one, since the Arrow is like 120 bucks, we were gonna do just a simple 1.75 millimeter extruder. Have you built? your own extruders before? Yeah, I spend a lot of time, um, what you need is a lathe and the, and the small drills. And then usually I just take a piece of, of grass um, bolt, which already has the thread on there. Yeah. So I could like um, um, screw it into uh, the, the heating block. Yeah. And the heating block is just a, a piece of aluminum with a hole and, um, and a thread. And um, the, the tricky part is um, that it's easier um, to make a 3 millimeter extruder run because you can hone the hole um, 
you know the the hole where the fil filament feeds um, through, yeah, which goes into the heating block. This hole should be very smooth on the inside, and um, uh, if you just drill it, it's not it's not smooth enough. So what you want to do is you want to get a, a, a honing tool. You know those they look like a you know what, a, what I'm talking about, no? It's a honing tool is a thing that's got like a hook on it. No, like it's a triple. I know how a honing tool looks like. If you Google honing tool, it's it's this thing with like three arms. Yeah. Um. Uh, let me see if I, maybe I have the wrong hook. Um. Anne Honen is German, I guess. Like a very small. Um, like what? Like a almost. It's like a metal. Looks like a metal brush or send me a link. Yeah. Um. Honing. Hmm. Give me just a second, like I'm, I'm confusing all my vocabulary. It's not, it's not honing. Um, sorry, it's, um, it's not honing, it's reiben. In German, it's reiben. Reib alle. Reiben. Um, hone. Boring tool? Boring tool, exactly. Sorry, of course. No, uh, no way. Um, let me see, let me check in the dictionary. So reib alle in English is ream, a branching or reaming. And let me find your window here. So if you want to make a nice hole, you need a, a reamer, and it's much easier to get a, a three millimeter reamer than it is to get like a one point seven five millimeter reamer. Okay, paste it in a chat window. Yeah, let me see some of my chat. I there we go. Um, Can you send a link to the actual product? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, I see it. Reamers. Yeah. Can I paste pictures here? And uh, no. so it's just a cylindrical reamer, or is it like angled out? It's just cylindrical. Mm -hmm. um, so usually you first drill the hole, and then you go in with a reamer, maybe even by hand. It's not like something that yeah. needs a lot of force. And it's in the beginning, it's slightly tapered, and then it goes to a perfect three millimeters. And so with this, it's quite easy to make a, re, uh, a perfect... Um, the problem is, if your hole is not perfectly smooth, and you do a retract move, you pull up some of the already liquid plastic, and it will stick to the, to the parts where your hole is not perfectly smooth. And then once you try to push again, it will stick inside your, inside your hole. That's yeah. why some people put like a little Teflon tube inside. Right. Which, in my opinion, is not really necessary. If you have a, 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 a nice hole, and actually I use the technique, which is it's kind of ridiculous. People use it for um, for seasoning their cooking pans. You know this technique Tell where me. you like, where you rub some oil in your cooking pan, and then you heat it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, does the that work? How long? Does the same technique works for hot ends. But how long does that stay? I, for quite a while, and it's easy to redo. Hmm. Sometimes I even just add a drop of oil um, to the filament. It was um, the last one I built was like three or four years ago, and I, I, should, I could ask if it's still working, but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And um, the good thing about the 1.75 millimeters is that it's much easier to feed like the whole um, extruder mechanism can be is, is simpler yeah 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 but what about now driving it so ideally we would have like a bond tech dual sided extruder um, uh -huh. but for a simple low cost three millimeter I mean wh what do you do just go to Wade yeah I, I like the weight but it's, it's always been working nice for me but it's a bit old school to be honest no 
So what's the modern version of the Wade? Oh, I, um, for, for, for the big printer, I, I, I make my own version, um, which is which has the, the quick release, so you, you don't have to like fiddle with the screws. I just got rid of all the stuff I didn't like about the... Like, um, for, I would say for a 3mm filament extruder, um, it, the, the reduction is necessary, but if you do like a direct drive extruder with 1.75, then you're fine just directly right. from the motor to a screw. Right, and that's why we wanted to do, yeah, like something that's the most basic. See, that that's getting advanced. Like we want to do an optimized rubber extruder. So one, actually, let me show you this. Uh, I haven't shown you the rubber extruder. So take a look at um, this on the wiki. That's, that's a little later, but I mean, for now we're... But take a look at the working document, the concept there, the double-sided drive, and then uh, sh the shortest, shortest possible neck. It's like ne actually neckless, without a neck. Yeah. And then it's, uh -huh. that distance there is super short, and then you've got the hot heater element there. Uh, and then the fans are on the, on the side, so you can access all of this. If there's any cloggage or anything, this is all accessible, you know? Yeah. Which is... Yeah, this is, this is nice, yeah. Yeah, some some to that effect. It's just a concept, but I think that's a little later. Like I think for now, just got to do the 1.75. But but take a look at, um, I mean, just the simple stuff with 1.75. Because we're talking about this basic low cost kit that we can provide at low cost, not like a hundred dollar yeah. Titan Arrow, you know? Yeah. 3D printer. I don't know what's going on there. Um, actually, the, the um, yeah, I'm sure there's a um, cheaper extruder. Yeah, if you want, I can have a look. If I if I if I have a good idea for um, a cheaper extruder that is easily available for everybody. Like if you make our own, it's going to be hard to distribute all the the pieces or. Okay, hold on. Let me just refresh here. Yeah. Because uh, I was, yeah, so what, what would you suggest? My chat box is not working for some reason. Yeah, that. Yeah, take a look at that one—the simple 3D extruder, 3D printer extruder. Well, what, ah. what, what would you suggest, though? Sorry, I lost you for a second. Yeah. Um, what I would suggest for like a um, for an extruder, yeah, instead of the expensive one, yeah, yeah, g g give me a while to to search a little bit, like um, like making one ourselves is is possible for anyone. For anybody that has a lathe, making a few, like a hundred kits of those, also won't be expensive. But, but if we can find something ready yeah. made that you can just buy in an easy way, would be even better, no? It would, but we can, um, yeah, yeah. Did you take a look at the link I sent you? The 3D printer, ex simple 3D printer extruder? Yeah, I have it open. So, I mean, what do you think of that? Just, you know. Simple. Yeah, that's that's basically all you need. Yeah, it's it's really not that complicated to make an extruder. Yeah, and I mean we can use the blocks, and you know we can, you know we probably can use an off-the-shelf block, and the metal part yeah. that's at the bottom there, we might have to make that, but it's just like a hole or two drilled through a piece of aluminum, um, and then threaded. Do you have any better idea for? For it or? No, actually this one looks really nice. It's the it's the same principle with the spring, so you, you don't need to fiddle with screws. Yeah. Um the extruder base block. Yeah. And then you can move the can, fan out of the way if it yeah. gets stuck. At some point I was also doing my own 
heating elements, just with some resistor wire. Yeah. Which which also works beautifully. Um, which would save another board piece, but yeah. But since we're already using um, quite a few parts that you have to order from somewhere, it's probably easier to just um, like order the resistor and everything as well. No. Yeah. Yeah, just get the resistor cartridge, like get as, get as many of these parts as possible, but just have full control over that. So we're working now, yeah. like we're not buying a full extruder. Like, I don't really particularly like the Titan Arrow. I mean, like, for example, the neck. I mean, the neck, there's no per like, yeah, I don't like the neck. The neck doesn't mean, means you can't do rubber really well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so something like this. Um, so that's one project. But let's let's go down a list of the what else is in a Steam Camp curriculum that you might want to can help us with. Um, let's see. Have you done any of the plotter, like circuit plotter? Yeah, um, um, a few like. Um I, I built a big one maybe five, six years ago for a professor at a university in Portugal. Yeah. Which, um, uh, yeah, worked really nicely. Um, I'm using a mixture of, um, like I used to use G-Code tools in Inkscape, which yeah. is completely open source and works nicely. But um, now there's um, something even, uh, and then I just used like Marlin or some yeah, generic Marlin. or maybe GRPL. Yeah. And, um, but now I found something, uh, a software that is um, also open source, which makes it even easier um, to um, to just send vector files to the plotter. And um, maybe I can send you a link. Um. Yeah, because because if we have Marlin already, should we do something else or just use Marlin? I I would say just use Marlin. Yeah, probably it's the easiest to just use Marlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just stick with that because that that means a tighter product ecology. There, we have less less pieces that you have to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. So, can you maybe like design and and prototype the pen tool head? But we have to fit it on an existing universal axis. So, if we do the you know like the three D printer thing. We, interchangeable head for that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Like right now, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I used to have a stepper motor just for the Z-axis, and um, which is a bit overkill. Probably a little servo is just good enough. You know the... Um, well, we already have the Z-axis on the univer on the on the XYZ axis system. So we don't, we've already got that. Uh, yeah, but this one is quite slow, and for the pen you just need pen up and pen down. Right. And there's like three ways. One is to use the, the Z-axis from the printer. Yeah. One is to use um, uh, just a, a solenoid that yeah. um, just puts your pen up or down. Yep. Or to use a little servo. Yep. And um, do you know the Axi draw? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They use a little servo and it, it, it works beautifully. Um, also, also the link you sent or you showed um, about the, the guy that turned like his little 3D printer into a PCB marking device. Yeah. He also used a little servo. And I think there's even maps for Marlin so you can directly do it um, from Marlin. Uh, do you do you think that the using the z-axis on the xyz would be too slow yeah that's quite slow but we have a belt drive so that w that's not slow oh you have a belt oh it's belt driven yeah oh yeah 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 maybe maybe even this would work yeah yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't add anything if we don't need it yeah yeah with the belt it's 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 quite quick and um yeah okay cool Okay, so let's put you on the plotter then. Um, so I'm, I'm going on page two there. Um, page two, oh uh, yeah. There, so um, we put 30, like where? 
plotter pen tool. Yeah, there. And then okay. figure out, can you figure out Marlin? Make it work with Marlin? Yep. Um, so I guess uh, I take a, um, a ramps and, um, and just make a little mount for my printer here. Yep. But and the only um, thing is we, we would want to... That's one part, but then we need the quick mount for the universal axis. Oh, yeah. Um, do you remember, um, um, I think that the name was PopFab? Yeah. Let me see if I... Yeah. Do you remember this one from MIT? Yeah. They had an interesting system for the universal mount um, where you have... Um, uh, can you see my video? Um, I can't see your video, you're just... It says you have connectivity well, issues. Yeah. Um, well, basically, um, I, I bet you know this type of um, mount, which consists of like three V grooves that um, meet at like 60 degree angles. Yeah. And then you have three spheres that also oh, yeah. have this um, star configuration. And this makes sure that you always put it exactly in the same spot again. You think we should use something like that? It's a bit fancy and academic if we find something that works just as good. Well, because that's good for a quick, quick tool change, but we're not there yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, precise tool change. Right now we are at, let's just do a universal mount that's simpler, maybe just, I don't know. We could, but that sounds like a little, maybe a little too much for now. We can yeah. 3D print it. For, for, for my big 3D printer, I had like um, like a V groove. Uh huh. Yeah, there you go. Ah, okay. I restarted in Chrome. Now I can actually see my camera as well. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe just like a, um, a V-slot groove where you can stick in the different um, heads. It's probably quick enough, no? V-slot groove for different heads? Mm -hmm. We have to f uh, follow the geometry of the universal axis carriage. So make it fit on that. Uh, yeah. Okay, I will. I will just download all the files and, and and have a look at them. Yeah, and you can work in FreeCAD, right? Yeah. Yeah, FreeCAD is like um. Now there is. Have you tried the Assembly Three? Uh, you uh, No, you're not so much into the all the newer features, no. Uh yeah yeah actually uh, I haven't tried it but yeah I think we're gonna use it because for the cordless drill challenge I think we probably will use that. Because it's probably the simplest workflow for updating parts. Yeah. But I will, I will try to, to um, get used to your technique, like the, the, the low-tech one. Yeah. But hopefully FreeCut is soon going to get like a proper assembly module. Right.
Let's see, I, I, I don't have a link from you. Did you send some link? No. Um, for, um, give me a second. Uh, oh, I guess it's better if I prepare myself better and I, I send you. I, 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 I take a note and yeah. I send you uh, yeah, yeah. some pictures of what I mean. And as far as the, so you've got the plotter part, would we do flat cam for the file generation? Yeah, flat cam sounds great. And there's another one. Yeah, um, I, 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 I put a note, I'll, I'll send you all the ones that I use. Okay. Um, uh, flat cam is, is like my most recent addition to the list, I guess. But um, let me see, maybe if I computer yeah and then let's see um. okay so I found this one recently which sounds promising which is like an it's like the software alternative to G Code Sender or something like this. I haven't tried it yet. What are you? But it sounds what? interesting. Which one? Um, let me see if I find your window. Damn it! I right hear. It's called BCNC. Okay, did you paste it in? Already disappeared on me. Did you? No, you still. Are you still there? Ah, okay. I lost you. Okay. S say, did you uh, type in a link to the chat box? Yeah. Um, let me test it again. Oh no! Can you do that? It disappeared here. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Yeah. VL VLA Chudas BCNC. Oh, cool. That's open source. Yeah. And another option that always works very nice is the, the, the fab modules. They're not exactly pretty and easy to understand, <laughs> but they, they do their job very well. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. Um, so this is the cam file generator. It generates the cutting file for circuits. Yeah, it, it imports from, um, for example, FlatCam or your Gerbil files, and then um, sends them to Marlin or whichever firm you you're running. Wait, I thought FlatCam generates the G code. Yeah, but then you still need kind of the the G code sender part of it, where you um, can adjust the, the the feed rate in real time and. And stuff like this. Wait, but that's so. What is the full tool chain there? So we're going to Key KeyCAD. We export that. We go into what? T tell me the tool chain as you see it. Um, KeyCAD, FlatCam, and then um, uh, BCNC. Yeah, but from FlatCam, don't we want to go to Marlin? Um, I'm not sure if there's a way directly from FlatCam to Marlin. Uh, okay, mm. let's, let's show you this one. Uh, let me show you the... 
I think in Flatcam you 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 finish um, uh, with your G code with your dot nc file or what yeah but then you still need to um, send it to Let me see how this guy did it with Marlin here. Let's see. Um, Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. I think what what um, Flatcam delivers in the end is the G code, which you could in theory just put on the SD card and make it make it run. But that's not enough. You don't think that's. But it's it's uh, usually it's quite nice to have like a, a software, probably you know the universal G code sender or a print run or all the different um, um, uh, G code senders. And this um, um, BCNC is is just like universal G code sender, um, which gives you the advantage that you can, um, for example, change the feed rate while the machine is running. Wait, but isn't that what Marlin does? Oh yeah, you can do this in Marlin as well to some degree. I mean, yeah. use Marlin as the controller, and you can change all of that. Yeah. Let me, see, let me show you how. Um, let me try to find this here. Ramps. Yeah, maybe you're right, and this is not really necessary. Um, yeah, maybe I'm just overcomplicating it. But I'm so used to having like a little, like normally for a CNC machine, I have my little G code. Like if I use a shopbot, there's like the shopbot software. If I have. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Let's call it like a MakerBot. Then there's the MakerBot software with it, and but yeah, we we could also do it like um, we could do it with Chili Pepper or there's lots of ways of getting your G code to the machine. Yeah. But yeah, probably the easiest is just put it on the on the SD card and and run it. Right. Where the hell was it? So it's, uh, was unique, unique. Okay, PCB milling with Marlin. Okay, take a look at this link here. And uh, what do they do there? So, I, let's see, did you get that? My paste Not yet. That. is this. PCB there. PCB milling with Marlin. Uh, so what's this guy doing? Flat cam to G code from Gerber files. And Marlin. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's all we need there. Okay. Um Let's see, so you're thinking after flat cam we go into GCN, the BCNC? Yeah. Yeah, so but, yeah, yeah. Go, I'd say go from Maybe flat cam to... I think we can go directly flat cam to, to Marlin. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No need for intermediate steps, yeah. Uh, 
Right. Because you you already have the display, you already have like yeah. the knob where you can adjust the feed rate. Yeah, exactly. That's all you need here. Yeah. Right, and then, like, depending on what flat cam, like, you can set speed in flat cam, right? Or that's you don't have speed there. You you do you do. Okay, yeah. It's just convenient. Like once the first ten seconds of milling, you want to go slow and see if everything's yeah. going well, and then you can go up to full speed. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, I think that's it. So, Marlin. PCB milling with Marlin. I'm going to add that to the prior art. Yeah, we want to just focus on, you know, the simplest, lowest number of tools to do all of this. Yeah. Yeah. kept a log but I'm gonna put a Verdi log yeah I think I still my, my log should still be there in where are you located right yeah. now in Munich yeah so for a change I, I have good internet <laughs> yeah yeah Verdi log it's still there yeah um, oh, can you send me the link uh, to what to, to which um, to my log? Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm, I have this team here. So I'm sending you a link to this team page, and you're on there. So hold on. Uh -huh. Okay, click on that. And there's links like Steam Cam, how it works, invitation, curriculum. Uh -huh. Yeah, you already filled out the survey there. Uh-huh, cool. So technically speaking, so you that's plenty for you, right? So so if you can design that. And with the intent that during the Steam Camp, we will make several circuits. We're going to make our DIY Arduino Uno. Nice, yeah. Then a uh, welder power controller. So a few power element few few transistors power transistors connected to the same controller so our universal controller then with an external board that runs a few transistors to handle the power yeah. for the welder which is just made of a bunch of battery packs so it's a cordless welder prototype uh -huh. yep so, so that's going to be you should have. Um, there's going to be relays or solid state relays or I would say it would be IGBTs probably Ah, okay. Or MOSFETs. Yeah, I have one here lying right in front of me. <laughs> I think IGBTs is what we want for efficiency, yeah. yeah. But this gives you three of the MOSFETs you need. You just need one, no? Right. Have you ever played with power circuits where an Arduino is, is activating MOSFETs with pulse with yeah. modulation? Uh -huh. Like in Fab Academy, um, the, there's one MOSFET that... Um, I think it's capable of 60 amps at like 150 volts and um, it's quite cheap it's like two euros each and and that's um quite a lot of power like um like if you run it at um 
really at 150 volts times um, 60 amps, it's like 9 kilowatt. Uh, but to make that, like, does it actually run at those things at that level, or do you have to keep it way below that? Um, I, I never got it to 9 kilowatts, but um, I've been using it for um, running like ovens and like heating elements for plastic recycling, and this was no problem. Uh, heating elements that you control the temperature by pulse with, like fast, like what kind of frequency? Um, I think, um, let me check, um, quite fast, like faster than it needs to be. Like a kilohertz, 10 kilohertz? Um, I think I even increased it for some reason, let me look at my documentation. Where's your documentation? Um, I'll send you a link. Like th this is quite old. This is from my, my Fab Academy. But if you look on the page um, where it says um, machine design. Did you find it? Or I put yeah. this one here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you see two circuits. One is um, controlling a motor, which is like a windscreen viber motor, which is also quite probably 60 watt. Under machine and right, and right below it is like one that um, controls the heating for, oh, um, cool. for the plastic extruder. And Did both boards look quite... Wait, is that from a uh, Fab Academy, like from your project? Yeah. Is that when you taught or when you were a student? When I was a student. Cool. And you see this big MOSFET in the um, to to the left side. Yeah. Yeah. With there's the also the data sheet and everything. Those are really strong. Oh wow. And that was what um. Was that, what, a motor con temperature controller? Yeah. This one would measure the temperature of the of the plastic and then um, increase or decrease the heating. Which was like, a th um, uh, I used an old power supply from a computer, so it's around 300 watt. Yeah. Which, of course, the welder is a lot more than this, but you could also use more than one MOSFET. And was that driven, like, can we drive that directly through our Arduino Sync, uh, or you need a driver chip for that? No, it can, like, in this case, I'm using an AT Tiny, which is just the same as an Arduino, and it's just, it goes directly from, from a digital pin out through a resistor to the, to the base of the, oh, wow. of the MOSFET. Yeah. So can we control a well, like, if we have 24 volts of a battery, can we control the voltage to control the, the welder power? Like, say... 24 volts at 200 amps? Yeah, the, the 200 amps part is the problem. <laughs> so you this need one goes like to four 60. of those. Can you just parallel four of those or would that not work? Yeah. No, you can. But you'd probably need more heat sinking, right? Like you need a heat sink there, right? Sorry, uh, sorry, I don't know what's going on. I'm getting kicked off. Very accurately set the timing for the spot welder. I'm sorry, sorry. Um, back up a little bit. I, I cut out there. Uh, I'm not talking about spot welding a real welder. Yeah. Uh, can you just use four of those in parallel to... Yeah. With a big, but, but you need a heat sink, right? Probably, yeah. Like, if you sold it to a big pad, like the, like the way I did it, um, they, yeah, you should try. Can you? So, wow, you, you drove those directly through a resistor, but can you drive four of those, or would that not, would the AT Tiny not have enough power to drive four of those at the same time? 
Oh, in the worst case, you take four four pins, and then yeah, this just this should work. Ah, four pins. Uh, can you time four pins at the identical time? Yeah. Within what offset? Like like really identical, or how much offset? Like a microsecond, um, like a nanosecond, or yeah, less than microseconds. But I would have to look into this. So huh. um, I. Um, just for my my to do list, so um, I design a um, plotter tool head. Yeah, plotter tool head uh, that holds the pen, and we're going to use the Z. And can you develop the code for that so you can l run a Marlin sample Marlin code for that that runs yeah. Marlin? Okay, so flatcam to Marlin workflow, and then I can yeah. have a look at the at the. Um, Basically, at ways of of switching the current for the for the welder, right? Yeah. Which, yeah, I guess the options are a relay, which is quite slow, solid state relay, which is interesting. You know those solid state relays that yeah, come from China? Yeah, but um, yeah. Why are they not good? Because the the ones for DC are a little more expensive. I think the ones for AC are easy to get, but aren't they a little yeah. more expensive for? for I think DC? it's overkill for okay. solid state relays. Um, you like the one I have in the current universal controller? Yeah. See, that one is only AC. You, you need special ones for DC. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And they're like, I was trying to look for those, and I just couldn't find them so easily as these. Like all, of, just just about everything you see is the uh, the AC. Yeah. Um. I mean, it would be nice, so you just use you know four of those, but I just couldn't find them. So you just do yeah. a separate circuit. Um. Okay, so I'll have a look into this as well. Yeah, and, and then there's um, another guy, Kevin Corbett. I don't know if he's. Um, he might be looking at that too, so we want to coordinate that. Uh, I'll get yeah. him on his login. So you, like, basically everyone wants to know what everybody else is doing. Um, so for the the file generation, can you do? W would you be able to do a version for pictures and one for circuits, or would would that be the same thing, or that would be different? Because then you'd have a different flow. Like maybe probably it would be. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Inkscape. Yeah. For the pictures, right? And then KiCad for circuits. Right, right. You think yeah. you can work out both of those or? Uh-huh. Okay, so that would be the Marlin plotter software. Actually, I didn't really put it there, but I'm going to say, well, under SDL cam file would be from, one would be KiCad. No, wait, what, what are we talking about here? SDL cam file. Oh, because cause at the end of the d wait, um, does that make sense? It's not SDL cam file, it would be a G code. We're not going through SDLs yeah. here, are we? And on like on one side, you, you go directly from Inkscape, like from vector graphics to G code. And on the other one, you go through the through flat cam, no? Right. So yeah. Inkscape to G-code and Flatcam to G-code. Right. Okay, so I'll put you, so Inkscape to G-code there, and then Flatcam to G-code. That's cool. Okay, excellent, excellent. And now, what else do we need here? So I won't bother you with any more, but I, I just discussing, like, if we had to find more people, the first place I would go to is other Fab Academy graduates, right? God damn it. What is this? <laughs> Why is it bumping me off all the time? Sorry, I'm getting, I keep getting... Sorry, I, I keep yeah. getting bumped off. But I was going to say, okay, so you've got enough tasks. Now, tell me this. How do we find more people to do to collaborate on this? And that would be Fab, Fab Academy graduates, right? Yeah. Now, I, can, I, um, uh, I, yeah. I can write a, a message to just a whole list of instructors of Fab Academy. 
That's a private list of instructors. I don't have access to that, right? Yeah. I'm fortunately I'm still on there. I should I should. Um, or is it? I don't, I don't I don't even know if it's public or not. Um. Yeah, but but this I can do, and I'm sure there's going to be more people interested. Cool. Uh, so I'll send you a message. Now let's see the message. Um, do you think the the invitation email? Let's see. Um, okay. So take a look at the invitation email, which I think is what you saw. The the first email you sent me, no, or the 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 link yep. in there. I'm trying, man. This Jitsi me is acting up. I can't. It's not pasting for me. Mm. Maybe I'll turn off my video. Um, the, the invitation, I was going to ask if that's enough to send to them. It's just kind of does the sh yeah. short. Um, and what about also another place to look at is not not the instructors, which is probably... Uh, Okay, now, now I've typed in the invitation, it worked. Um, Have you tested um, BlueJeans as a video conferencing program? No. I think this is what um, right now is used in, in Fabric Academy. It's called BlueJeans, um, same principle, you just go to a website and... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if this is any better. Is, it, all, is, is it open source? Right. Okay, we'll stick with uh, Jitsi. Yeah. Oh, and the, yeah, there was another one, um, which was also interesting. Yeah. I just compiled a list of, of interesting stuff to show you the next time we, okay. we talk. Um, another thing, if we find, so people who are not necessarily Fab Lab instructors, the Fab Academy instructors, but students, I mean, there might be some good students there too that I should contact, right? Yeah. Where do I find the students? Um, let me check. So this is the list of all students, but um, but it's not that they have their email written in there. It's quite a lot now, eh? So far, 943 graduates. 943? Yeah. Do they have also a list of places that Okay, did everyone who runs a Fab Lab take the Fab Academy? No. There's there's more Fab Labs than Fab Academies. Mm -hmm. But um, there is there should be a list somewhere. Um, oh yeah, wait, I think I found it. Yeah, so this is the list of all the labs that run Fab Academy. Does that mean that the person there took the academy, or they could be hosting somebody else who took it? Um, no, like of all of those, um, there's one one person there that has Fab Academy.
so like for example with like you know Nuria, Robles, Fab Lab Leon. Mm -hmm. Do you know her? Yeah. Yeah, she's awesome. Like she's she did Fab Academy I think a year before me and um she's really nice and really cool. The next one in Bilbao, I don't know this guy. Then the next one is uh, Santiago, he's my colleague in Fablo Barcelona. Um, Daniel Garcia from Fablo Madrid is also cool. Um, if you want, I can compile you a list with all the emails until um, next time. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, you mean all those people there or other ones? All, um, like I think it's like 20, 30 or maybe even more um, uh, places where Fab Academy takes place. And then, but the, in the list of instructors is, is longer. There's like probably a few hundred people in there. USA, Troy, Charlotte. There's only what? There's only three, four places, four places in Canada that run Fab, USA that run Fab Academy. But there's may, way more Fab Labs in the U.S., right? Yeah. Just four of them run it. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Now it's probably you know it's probably more likely that we get some people with a mission in places like you know like Peru or Brazil. Because, you know, people might be more hungry for positive social impact, or no? Yeah. And the, the Chinese are really good, like, um, where is it? Oh, what is it? Fab Lab Shanghai. Yeah. Um, yeah, from, from, from the new, new labs, like, also in, in, in uh, uh, Fab Lab Singapore. I, I'm not, yeah, um, I, I'm not sure, like, maybe it's more the, the Indian ones that are interested in sustainable mm -hmm. living. But, well, we can try, like, this This is, it, um, it's an easy task to, to write an email to all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is the thing under the invitation, which, let's see... I pasted there. Is that enough for you, or do you you wanna you got enough info to send them an email, or maybe just copy yeah. that? No, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see. Like your first mail was this one. How do you in camps? Invitation. Yeah. So the invitation was um, is one page on the wiki, and then already. Blah blah blah. blah. I'd like to ask. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it, no? Okay, that sounds good. Um, see if anyone else filled the survey. Responses. Nope, just you and William have filled out the survey as far as the Steam Camp survey. Oh, that's very few, huh? I am um, uh, um, my friend. I think I told you about the uh, Finder Garden. That he told me that he he just came back from Berlin um, on Monday, where he met um, Neil Gershenfeld, <laughs> uh -huh. and um, and he told me that there is, that uh, a f that he has a friend that is kind of like the open source ecology Germany guy. Ah, like uh, Tim Ville or something. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't respond to this. I don't know, he must be busy, but I emailed him, he hasn't responded. Yeah. Is he somebody I should um, get in contact? Yeah. Yeah. Where is he based? I don't know. Uh, I thought it was... No, I don't know. I mean, Berlin, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Um, um, can you tell me the name again? Uh, Tim. T-I-M-M. Ville. V-W-I-L-L-E. Uh, he's like I L L E, Tim Ville. Okay. Ville. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I know Oliver, who was on the dev team, but none of them responded to my my request. Huh. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ring the promotion, uh, or the, how do you say, I'll make some advertisement and see if we get some more people on board. That's awesome. So, which, who are you going to contact? Like, basically all the people from the Fab Academy list, they're going to be on that list, your list? Yeah. Well, I should probably email the people, like individual people from that list anyway. Uh-huh. Should I? Yeah, um, like, just straight... Uh, like I'm, the, the list is so long, but um, let me see who might be interested. Um, yeah, Nuria is a good choice. Like um, she's, yeah, um, she's a reliable person, and like she has lots of contacts. Everybody knows her. Like if she gets involved, then you quickly get more people involved. Um, then maybe, uh, what's his name from? Public Madrid. Santiago Fuente Mila, um, info at, I oh know this is, uh, no, that's a stupid email. Um, Santiago Fuente Mila? Yeah, he's in Barcelona. on that list. Um, you could try Carsten Nebel. This is this would be my my alternative job. Carsten Nebel at Hochschule Rheinwald.de. Mm -hmm. Sebastiano Mestre, Antonio Grillo. Like right now I'm with the Italian ones, but um, the Portuguese ones, there's only one right now in Portugal, which is weird. Ah, because of Fab Academy notes, okay. Yeah, but this is already a good, like, um, this narrows down the Fab Labs a lot by the ones it does, that yeah. do Fab Academy. Because if you go all fab labs, then it's just too many. Yeah, but do you think like so? If there, there's more fab labs than fab academy students. So the requirement is they don't even have to take the course if they want a fab lab. Yeah, you you could call yourself fab lab as soon as you have like the the five machines. You can say I'm a fab lab. Oh, okay. And if you find somebody that says, um, I think nowadays you have to find somebody um, or um, five labs from FabLabs IO that all confirm that yes, he does have the five machines. Oh, I see. But it's all that's all you need. But um, uh, if you want to run Fab Academy, you should at least have um, one person in your lab that has Fab Academy already, 
Or you have to find a, miss, um, a remote instructor that helps you. Right. But basically, it's it's very open. Like there's no rules. Anybody c can be Fab Lab, and anybody can participate in Fab Academy even without paying. It's just the piece of paper that you're missing in the end. Yeah. So are you planning to have like a weekly, monthly um, meeting? Just like a, a short little talk or? Uh, for what? Um, just um, um, in, in this group for the um, for the Steam camps? As far as actually running them? No, I mean just in the in the preparation phase. Yeah, yeah, in the prep um, phase, like as soon as I get a like couple more people, like I want to call a meeting, an organizing meeting where we actually talk about uh, what I was doing is writing, just breaking down the curriculum into like simpler visual representation and identifying the tasks. And yeah, I do uh -huh. want to call a meeting like soon, next week okay. maybe. Uh, yeah. Once we get enough you know, people and yeah, so we can actually talk about doing the prep and what's already done. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I guess I will just start working. Um, I think I should first um, build um, uh, a few of your of your universal axes. Yeah. And um, and then yeah, slowly, like I'll have a look. Do, maybe I should just build the um, because the the printer that we built together in 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 your place. Yeah. This is not the printer that we're going to be using. No, it's a it's no. an even simpler one. Simpler. Yeah. So yeah. re reduce it to the simplest one. And the, the current one that you see there, I think, what do you think about the axis orientation? Can you just comment on that? So on the 3D simple page on the wiki, um, is that the way to go? And I was thinking that uh, maybe the... Yeah. Yeah, maybe the x-axis, which has got the extruder, should that be vertical or horizontal? Wait, I'm just looking. It's is it? Um, I search in the wiki for B3D. D3D no. simple. Let me paste the link. D3D simple. Yeah, put it in the chat box. Oh, yeah, this looks a bit like the um, how was it called? Um, Snapmaker. Snapmaker. It kind of reminds me of the um, uh, how was it called? Yeah, there, there used to be a very similar one that was also very simple and very, very quickly and cheaply to build. Mm. But yeah, I, I guess I'll just rebuild this one now. Yeah. Yeah. So the z-axis goes like this, y is like this. For the x, do you think it should be horizontal or vertical? Right now it's horizontal. Because that's how the tight and arrow fits on it. Yeah, but it's okay. It's not the most rigid construction, but it doesn't have to be. And it prints fine, no? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah. if we turn it vertical for the x-axis, then we would have to redo the mount for the Titan arrow. So yeah. maybe, but then again, if we do the simple extruder, right, then we have to do a mount that's a little different than the Titan arrow. Or we have to, yeah. no, we have to work that all out. Like, the universal mount has to fit all the three different machines. So we have to think about it. So maybe, like, in the meeting, we really decide, next meeting, we'll just decide on how exactly do we do that. Uh, yeah. So that the pen, the printer, and the, the mill, which is the motor part, how do they all work together? 
So you, your question is like, if, if you have the two um, parallel rods of the of the x axis, do you put them in a horizontal or in a vertical plane? That is correct. Yeah. 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 Most printers they, they put them vertically. Yeah. yeah. Um. For I don't know if there's a like it's a bit stiffer in this direction with the weight. Yeah. But I don't think it makes a big difference. Yeah, it probably won't make a big difference. There's all kinds of details. Because you can also do this thing, and you can put the second z-axis on it and make this way wider, like make it like two or three feet wide, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks, it reminds me of the printer bot. Remember this one? Yeah, yeah, printer bot. But there's another one called Snapmaker. Google that. Snapmaker? Yeah, it's the biggest Kickstarter ever. Well, no. one of the biggest. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see it, yeah. One of the biggest Kickstarters. Well. Yeah. Um, okay, we've got plenty. Uh, do you know any people who know about electric motors who built? Because we're, we're doing this. Um, let, let me just show you this one thing. Because we've got a person. We've got Michel. His work, he's working on uh, the motor part, 3D printed motor. On the brushless DC? Yeah. Yeah, but I've seen all the videos from this. There was one guy that built like a kilowatt motor. Yeah. This one looked quite impressive. Yeah, this is the. So yeah, take a look at. Take a look at this yet. Oops, I'm not pacing. But it's this one is 500 watts. And, but do you know any people who, uh, who have experience with Axial Flux brushless DC motors? Mm, no, I, I could ask some people in Portugal that might know a bit more, but like rather, like, just like this, yeah. unfortunately not. Well, we've got the blueprints from that one, so we're working from that and then see if we can uh, make it more modular. Yeah. Yeah, but that but actually, I'm there. sitting here right next. Like, I bought all the magnets um, for for building. Um, I I wanted to make an axial flux one and a and a radial flux one. Mm -hmm. And there's one interesting one. Let me check my bookmarks. Um, there's one that is uh, making use of a funny effect that um, might be interesting. Let me see. What Hallback array? Yeah, exactly. Have you, have you tried that? There's like a... Um, That's... We're, we're trying to get, get away from, from that because apparently the one that I'm showing, the Axial Flux one, is, yeah. is like more efficient than it and it's like less way less expensive, like three, three times less expensive to make. Okay. So we were looking at the Axial Flux. Yeah, that other one is, is really advanced, like the one from... Switzerland? Yeah, the, the Halbach array yeah. one. That one is like, I don't know, I think that's too much. That's too complicated, actually. Yeah. Uh, I think <laughs> okay. we can do much better. Yeah. For price and performance. Because that one was like, I think that guy got up to, what, 60 or 80? What, what did he get up to, 60%? Or 80% efficient? Um, is it this one? This one, that's six, six, let's see, uh, what was the efficiency there? 80%, yeah, that guy achieved 80% efficiency, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think we nice. can do better, we can do better with that, like we can probably get, with our version, we can probably get 95%, but okay. it's not, but not the power density, it has to be a little larger. But that's good yeah. for some applications, as long as we get the efficiency. So for example, for the grinder, the plastic shredder, that would be perfect. Yeah. Yep. Let's see, what do you show me here? Oh! Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, that's a generator, though. Not a motor. Yeah, it's same same story. The, the Gen 6, no? But that's a generator as opposed to motor. So yeah, but it, it's the same. It's the same principle. Like you could run it as a motor as well. Can you run it as a motor? Yeah. Oh, um, that's, uh, oh, that's not bad. Yeah, but to be honest.
honest, I have no idea about the whole Halbach thing, but it 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 looks kind of interesting, though. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's see. see. Where are the coils there? I see. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But it's not super open source. And see. Yeah. See, did they have any data on that? Did they? No, this is just like um, I, I know just as much as you do, mm -hmm. but um, I just I was just interested because it, the the whole principle I, I never heard of Halbach array before, and so I clicked on it and it and the model looks nicely made. Well, I'm wondering if I mean I'm sure that I know, I know they, they typically, typically can be run as motors, but I'm not sure about. Can this one be run as a motor? Because it depends how you build it. Not all of them yeah. can be. I, let's see, do, can this one? I'm not sure. Uh, okay, I, 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 will, I will try to, to uh, um, uh, learn a bit more about yeah. um, uh, building brushless DC motors. Um, like the, I think the thing that, um, yeah, the, the, the stupid part about the efficiency is that you, um, Normally, you build motors with a core out of this um, special type of um, um, stamped metal sheets right, right. that touch but um, are isolated against each other right. for having a good, um, uh, um, how's it called, the magnetic flow. Yeah. No, it's not. Uh, and, um, and with the plastic, you it's it's more difficult. Yeah. But since but you have like yeah. your your stamping mechanism, you might even be able to like make a. Make a die and just um, stamp um, sheet metal. Yeah. Well, the idea apparently behind the axial flux is that doesn't help you there. Okay. That's what I heard. Um, because the geometry is so close to that that it doesn't help it, and it actually worsens it because it's heavier. So uh -huh. there's arguments for one one or the other, and I yeah. I think I. <laughs> The axial flow is nice because it, it's it's very common as a generator, so you could use it as a generator and as a motor. And yeah, yeah and since we're really close with your coils to the magnets, you probably don't need like the the ferrous material around it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so Michel, he's working on that. He's gonna get that prototype. So um, he's in Belgium. That's good. Uh -huh. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So I guess awesome. I'll, I'll just um, uh, um, try to orient myself, look at all the different wikis, and because you have so much information already online, it's going to take me a while just for getting on on the same um, stage. And um, okay, cool. Okay. And so I will try to um, make one of the stages of the. Of, or, or maybe I'll actually build a whole little printer um, uh, and make. Uh, a tool head, a changeable tool head, which should, in the best case, run um, a pen, yeah, and maybe even uh, the the little the little motor with a spindle, no, for milling. Yeah. Well, the idea is that the the same X Y Z holds the different heads, right? Yeah. In a quick so so when you when you do it, pay attention to the quick connect, quick connect um, connectors. Uh, I believe that. So I was looking at connectors, and I, I looked at if you go to page six of the of the the presentation, MTA one hundred is what I identified as a potential good connector. So it's basically the hundred the point one inch pitch like an Arduino's, but you can make it quickly. It's this quick it's a IDC insulation displacement connector. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so I'm kind of excited. I got some of that here. So I'm going to test the quick plugs if we can make them, because uh, we got to make all this quick connect, like the printer head has to be quick connect and everything else. Yeah, yeah, those look good. Um, I use the ones, um, uh, how to describe it, they're like um, six, six pin connectors and I use two of them. Uh -huh. And um, with two of them I can have one which is just for the 
for the heating element, for the sensors, for the uh, two fans on the head. Yeah. Like with, with two of those, I was um, it was very easy, and it, it's probably the same MTA something. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they, they were, were quick connect, connect. Like they were like installation displacement. Yeah. Uh huh. I can I can put this in my, oh. uh, my MTA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MTA. Let me know if you find something else there. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking a long time for different connectors. It's kind of confusing because there's so many different ones. Yeah, yeah. I found one that is very common. That is, um, you know, when you connect your your power supply in your computer inside. Yeah, yeah. It's this 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 style. Yeah, uh, the page that. Yeah, I've got a page called Wire. Wire, and I'll I'll add that to the links. Add that. Uh, the main wiki page there, and a team page. So, Using the link to the invitation to the okay. Let me send you a link to the main page from which you can get everything. So, um, the page is called Steam Camp Team. So yeah, that is there. If you can get it. Okay, there, the Steam Camp team page, so that's, it's got everything. The last link is Steam Camp Curriculum, Prior Art, like all the stuff we know that exists already. Yeah. It would be interesting to get, like, for example, the person that made that motor to work with us, and we should try that. So I'm gonna... That would be interesting, because that person might have uh, thought about the Axial Flux, too. They should be on our team. See if we can do that. That, that design looked pretty decent. I mean, that, that was looked pretty impressive, like they knew what they were doing. So, Which one? No, the one you, you linked me to, the Gen 6 electric power generator. It looks looks like there, there's some skill in that. Yeah, I look around if, if I find somebody that already built one, which is quite cool. And, um... It would be so awesome to make, like, a, um, to make the universal access one, to be able to, um, print. Yeah. Um, uh, with a with a pen. Yeah. Um, uh, and mill with a self-made little Absolutely. milling machine. Oh yeah. Oh this yeah. This would be so cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be good. So that's yeah. fine. Let's get the people on board. Yeah. I mean, we're doing all right. I think uh, Michelle should have that pretty soon. He's working on it. And the welder is also super interesting. I had no idea about like um, battery-powered welders. Yeah. But it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Once we find a replacement for lithium ion batteries, it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be marvelous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then my I don't know, right now I'm still thinking oh yeah, well, you and I talked about hydrogen and you were like, Oh, it's not gonna happen. I don't know. I'm gonna no, but you were right, like I, I looked it up and actually if you store it at, at um, ambient pressure, it doesn't make you any problems at all, in contrary. Yeah. That's yeah. right. So I'm, you know, I'm still, uh, I'm not writing my book yet, but I will. I'm gonna look into the hydrogen question again because we're gonna have to get on top of that soon. So anyway. Yeah. Um, right now I'm like, um, I'm just about to do some calculations on comparing alcohol and uh, and oil. Mm -hmm. How many how many um, square meters of of um, sugar roots do I need for running my car for a year? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Well the. 
Right. Um, because now everybody's like, oh no, no, we can't do this because we're competing with food. But like, hey, um, on the long term, we're always competing with food. Like, yeah. it's energy, sunlight. Well, yeah, so I mean, do those calculations and do hydrogen, solar hydrogen, solar hydrogen comes like 100 times better or something yeah. like that. Because for, for beets, you would have like 1% or sugarcane, it's like 1%. But, but that's after you already trapped the sun and already like 10%. No, it's, wait, I forget the numbers, but with PV, you could get like... Uh, essentially, it's at least 10 times better because it's 10% efficiency. Like, plants are going to be like 0.1% typically. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's about 100 times better for PV, but then you can get yeah. hydrogen from that. But anyway, uh, that's for later. Hopefully, in a few years. Okay. Well, yeah. thanks a lot. So, we'll, we'll call a meeting like probably like next week to, with everybody on the team and then we'll talk, talk more and see how far you can get so we can start coordinating okay. in, a, in an effective way. Great. Excellent. Pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure to talk. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll follow up with all those Fab Lab uh, contacts. I'm just going to start emailing them. And you, you yeah. do the same. Yeah, just the instructors, please just send it okay. out. Thanks a lot. So, we'll, yeah, we'll okay. talk soon. Greetings, Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.